So I will resume our meeting with a agenda item two action items. We are asked to nominate and also elect a chair, a vice chair, and secretary. So we'll note that correction. We are electing a chair and a vice chair. Are you counting for a quorum? At this point, I would entertain a motion. Uh, if anyone would like to nominate an officer position, Grover? Um, I was thrilled that you stepped into the shoes of the chair and I would like to share my chair part. I think we should work together. I love the way you run a meeting, and I would just like to see this. I can't ever do one and then the other. Concurring, I would accept the nomination for chair. Okay. And Joel? Motion and a second, and I think our next step is to vote. Did you? I did. Okay. Um, and then, I'm um, sorry. Do we do a show of hands? We can do by asking. Okay. Thank you. All of those DAP members in favor say aye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. That's what we get comfortable with. No, you're my subject matter expert. Um, so thank you very much. Um, thank you. I'm happy to step up and very happy that Mark is also here. Um, our next order of business on our agenda. I'm sorry. Yes, we have we have um, vacant DAC member positions um so there's a recruitment discussion uh with the time slot of five minutes and uh, we'll call in Grover next thank you um i alluded to it earlier we've been through this process three times i think i'd like to just to consider you know i'll agree with them some of the company they have two openings that i am clear of now and two openings from june june 30th myself and Marie both are turning to complete so that means there are four sub area representatives who can be selected between now and then. Look at how it's worked in the last three years. We have 55 like, that's a big part 
fairly. And then have them be uh, selected through the authentication of the best staff. It's a golden opportunity. It's also it's about the currently in process of plan. It's also an opportunity to see if you can continue to advance the medicine in this product of, of cheap change to illegal. Spoke up. Next thing is like to build the local group in each area. So it's growing there. Not everybody has to be in the same When sub area three meets, there's a group of people in sub area. One meets with the people that are interested. You can ask them if you can start to get people. So from that point of view, I'd like to suggest we look at this campaign to do the project we already have with the support of NC Church, with the support of county, do what we've done successfully the last few years, the following the method. Hi, I think you put your hand down at that point. Yeah. You're maybe okay. Well, I, I just want to clarify this is two presentations of the class officers are only because I wanted another person to have to be done. Remember, you know, one or two people from the DAC to just um, put this all in motion. We'll, we'll develop the tool, develop whatever we need to do, and look at the procedure um, that we used before, um, update it, and um, bring it back to the next meeting. And we all can see if that works. I have a question too that in the conversation we've been having the, about your appointment and your appointment, that's only to fulfill the existing term. And that's why that ends in June. But the other two, I don't know what they're specific. I don't have it in front of me. I could dig through my briefcase here and get it. But what is the term? Because it would be replacing people to fill the rest of those terms. And I don't know what that time is. And it isn't something I want to just 
that any warm body, you're good enough, it was hit it. It, who, it who is a, I've got it. Just a second. Sorry. I think it's critically important that the people who do it are doing it to be represented for the community. The biggest reason we changed from having a district advisory board under the old model to a district advisory committee was to be able to have people that were committed to, I wish I had my, I'll get that, the two-way communication that the representatives are speaking to their area they live in and bringing information from that area, which helps us build. And just having somebody say, sure, I'll be on that. We had people who were unwilling to communicate with the local community organization, et cetera. So that's why we went to all that trouble to build that model and have it be approved for a, a nominated committee to find people who would then be supported by their local area. So I need to ask for a clarification. Joel, were you first or was um oh I'm sorry. I'm I, not I, sure. My my only comment was a little tongue in cheek, but I'm assuming the NCPRD criteria for recruitment is going to be beyond just a warm body. And I'm assuming the interested parties have a best interest in the NCPRD. And so I think we should let the the procedure play out. I mean there's there's people that I'm sure would be interested in serving out the, the terms of the two res resigned members. Which could be two years, three years, but not four years. Sure. Okay. I got that. Sure. Just wanted to say, you know, I think that what you're saying is all consistent with what's in the bylaws. What you could do tonight is establish a subcommittee for the sub areas to nominate these people to serve out the remainders of these terms, work with staff to do so, and get that process started. Because of the, the current vacancies are for remainder of those terms, whatever it's two or three. And then of course you can repeat this for the sub areas that are necessary for the new terms starting July 1. So those are going to be different subcommittees to some extent, but consistent with your bylaw, that's something like a point. But if we don't know the exact sub areas for what's vacant at this time, you can do it next month too. Yeah. Well the sub areas are sub area three area. and sub area two. You'll need two then two sub areas nominated committees. Mm -hmm. Mark, is your hand up? Yes, and I forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> then I will slip in the comment that the last time there was uh, recruitment for some area three, there were three interested folks and two who were elected in. So we can even reach out to the person who maybe see if they're still interested. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, this thing keeps going to sleep on me. My Oh, thank you. Um, that takes us to um, approval of the meeting summary from November the 8th. I make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. I have a correction to add. Other than that, I'm fine with that. Um, Kia Selly was present at that meeting, and she's even referenced in the notes, but she's not listed as in the present. Uh, she was a staff member at that meeting, or? Yeah, so we need to add ESL to the staff and officials present. Okay. So that's the only amendment I see that needs. Would you like to amend I your motion? With my motion to the current staff. And seconded. And so our, say our meeting notes from November 8th are approved. And let's go into our discussion agenda. Um, changes or status updates? And I believe this is. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back. I'm still not clear what you decided about the. the <laughs> I mean, uh, are you going to establish two committee, a committee for each of the sub things? Uh, sub, what is it? Sub, sub, sub area. Sub areas. Sub oh, yeah. Areas. You're looking for folks to volunteer today to be on this subcommittee? Well, I'm just asking. Well, I'm not sure that everyone understands what we're doing next. So, are you. Yeah going to establish a subcommittee for each sub area to put together a nominating process, nominating committees. The approved process, uh, I, I'll read it right from the bylaws. It speaks to that there's a nominating committee in each of the sub areas and that not if there is not a nominating committee, then it goes to a method more like the one that got me on the district body board and I had to interview with nine NCPRD staff members. Can you still got it? Hmm? I know it's. I, they just knew I would out if I didn't get it. But nonetheless, uh, our other method specifically talks about having um, a, a nominating committee, and so that would be sub area 
three, that would be Jeanette and company, would have to be part of having that nominating committee convene. And so we can't speak for that committee at the moment. And the other, Anita and sub area two, would also have to put that in place. And so I suggest that there is a subcommittee that oversees that. And at our next meeting, we tell you what we find out. And I'd be happy to be on that subcommittee. I guess that. <laughs> well, thanks. I'd like to be transparent. So are you are you saying you want a subcommittee over the subcommittees? I don't know. They're not called subcommittees. In the sub areas, according to the approved plan, they are called nominating committees. Nominating committees. Thank you. Okay. Is everybody clear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So that we let who would like to be involved in this process? How's that? <laughs> Can I just throw something out there? I mean, and this is, Milwaukee doesn't have to do this, so it, it's not, I don't care how you decide it, but I do know in the case of uh, former chair Ryan Stee that he lives in an area with an active CPO that meets regularly. And so I feel like that's a conduit mm -hmm. for having the discussion and recruiting members and why create a committee and reinvent the wheel. In, in Jeanette's case, it sounds like her CPO doesn't meet as regularly, so maybe you need that. But I, I feel like in Oak Grove, there is a, you know, there is a mechanism to reach people and a big mail list that they can use along with NCPRB using its mail list. So I just want to put it there. I remember my question can I ask you like, so uh, most of the time these openings occur or show up on the on the county list of openings and commissions and so on. is this one showing up there it always does in the process that I'm speaking of it has showed up there every year All right I mean it doesn't yet I don't matter so correct it doesn't yet but it would right? uh -huh. so that's how a lot of us find out about these things is and we do at the community council do list all these openings and that's this will be one that I'll be discussing today uh, so I thought the committee was going to talk about the process not how they were going to actually do it so I'm confused like to call on you and I'm sorry about the order I was reading the bylaws. I'm just... No, it's okay. And I have extra copies of the bylaws for anybody who would like them. But I think it's helpful to look at them right now. Because mm -hmm. It spells out pretty clearly what we need to do. It's Article 4, Section E. All sub areas may choose to reappoint their designees or submit new representatives for board of directors approval. New designees will be recruited and nominated by a sub area nominating committee located within that particular sub area. And if no such committee exists at the time of the recruitment, then from a committee composed of two members of Clackamas County staff, two members of the DAC, and two members of the community planning organization <laughs> or other community groups located within a particular sub area, all members to be appointed by the board of directors. So with that, you can nominate your members from the DAC today. Uh, we can then assign staff and then look for the folks from CPO or other organizations to be on those committees and nominate these folks. Or you can just create by motion because this is pretty clear that if no committee exists, if that committee would exist by creation of this body, I would imagine that I don't think there's one standing right now. So we don't have one. So I think we just follow the second component of this clause and appoint the DAC members to these nominating committees. Then we can assign staff and look for folks from a CPL. Mm -hmm. We can get it started. May I ask <clears throat> I absolutely. Uh find that to be an untimely statement. This, these openings just happened. The nominating committee doesn't just sit in ready at the moment, push a button and there they are. It is a process of working through the existing groups that live in the areas, sub area one being one, sub area, excuse me, two being one and sub area three being one. And you're saying since they don't exist, actually they're not, in place at all times. So this just happened and you want an instant response. I think that's unreasonable. And that's not what it says in the plan that was approved by the board of directors. And you're quoting this and it says, it refers to that, but the definition of that is all in another plan. I'm not sure what the other plan is, but I think it just- You're not sure? I'm just saying, this is what your bylaws say. And you don't have a committee. If you as a group would like to create this committee, you know, this, this is where these bylaws are not crystal clear as to what this committee is. And we have a mechanism there to set up a committee that seems to represent the organization well. 
but that's something for your your body here to discuss. <clears throat> Please. I just want to make an observation. I'm not not making a recommendation. I just want to make an observation. Um, sitting in on your meetings um, since these bylaws have been passed with this nominating committee process, um, you have you all have and different people through attrition have struggled understanding this um and it seems to me that it e needs to be either simpler be better understood or some kind of established committee in place to just turn this over to but it seems like we've been here before I i've been in this movie before <laughs> and somehow i think we need to streamline it we spent a lot of time on this uh, where we could be spending it on more things that help inform you about the district so uh, i yield Hi there. Gary, thank you. There is a plan approved by the board of directors on the recruitment process. Staff will work it offline. We'll reach out to you if any assistance is needed. There's no more need to just debate this. Respectfully, the bylaws are inaccurate, but because this group never adopted the prior plan in the bylaws, I suggest to do that ASAP. But regardless, the board of directors has already approved your recruitment plan. Staff will work offline to do what needs to be done. Now, include these members as needed. So let's please move forward. Okay. Um, to that end, uh, we have one volunteer to be on this committee. I, I'm I am going to go there. I, it sounds like we need another DAC member to volunteer and get this moving forward. So we don't need we don't need to follow our bylaws there. Okay. Now what I'm suggesting is that the, the, the nominating committees need to be formed. So staff work offline. We'll loop in members of this group as needed, but it's sub area two and three, it sounds like. There's no current member on this DAC in those areas. So we'll work offline with staff. Susan, I I'm, I'm in three. Well, we'll staff will work offline and we'll notify you by email if we need you. But for now, we do not need two members of the DAC. We're going to form the sub the nominated committees by sub area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, took me a second, but I'm with you now. <laughs> okay, what's next? So um, we have. Um, 25 minutes left. And so um, we were, I was going to walk through the budget. We also have public comment and we have DAC member reports and, and director reports. So I just want to get a sense of how you want to spend these next 25 minutes. Um, we, we, if you want to have a, a more robust discussion about the budget, we can um, call a special meeting if you'd like, and or we can wait until that February meeting. Um, I, what I, I just want to get you uh, get a sense to help you make that decision in terms of process. The train has left the tracks. On, is that station? Station. Okay. <laughs> 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 Budget train has left the station. <laughs> and, um, if, if the world was perfect or even better, we would have had this conversation several months ago so that there could be true engagement. Um, but I got to tell you, uh, we have timelines to meet and we have we have to submit a lot of information. So we're not going to get, you're not going to get probably the type of engagement that you would like just because we're here now because it, we had such a crappy fall in terms of everything. So I just want to give that May culpa. So really, um, the conversation about the budget, um, while I would love to get your input and all these priorities, we're, we're running out of time. We, I think we need to build a good process in for next year. So um, we can, I can have a discussion and really get, so you understand the budget. I think it's important that you understand it. Um, but in terms of the urgency, uh, because of the timelines we have, we're not gonna need that this time. So what I'm saying is, we can wait till February if you want. I could start the conversation here, but but you have these other items that I that I want to be respectful of. So you excuse me, you tell me how you want to to you want to do DAC member reports, for example. Um, you want to yield those. So that's really up to y'all, Mister. I would prefer to hear the budget after Director Sass's comments that we are financially in trouble in various places to continue this conversation with the budget, hear it again in February, and then do the public outreach, or the public comment, right? I would second that. Can I make one qualifying statement? <clears throat> um, so I wanna make sure that while 
I think I know what Cindy's in. I don't have any insight, but I think I know what she's present. I want to make sure that you all know that there's two aspects of the financial condition of the district. And the budget doesn't reflect all of that typically. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's the financial liabilities, deferred maintenance. There is the, the revenue versus expenditures, really is the good business model. And, um, you know, any other capital products. Some of that's budget related, some of that you'll hear, but not all of I Express will be contained in her, her presentation. That's another discussion. Okay. Okay. It's more of a more of a business model discussion and where we're headed. And are we keeping are we keeping track or are we losing ground? I argue we're losing ground. I follow that. Okay. Maybe I'll make a with the chair, I'll put an item on the agenda. Okay. okay. Thank you. So what I'm hearing is we will change our agenda. We will um, skip over changes in status updates. We will include the budget process. We will skip over parks registration, um, include public comment. We will also skip over member reports and uh, director report today to focus on the, the budget information. Okay, uh, going forward, thank you. Thank you. So you have the document that uh, I hope everybody has it. I mean, you have a color printer, so it looks prettier. Um, and so I want to thank Callie, who are you here, Callie? Um, <laughs> because she provide. I mean, she's like she's like a budget star. Uh, she's a numbers queen, and so she has um, put a lot of work into this. And um, if you have really detailed questions, Callie, come up to the table as well. So, so if you if they have detailed questions, um, I'm going to go through this um, uh, in general, but I want you to feel free to ask questions. Okay. Um, so the first slide here is just terms used in uh, in, in the budget. Are did, first of all, be honest. Did everybody get a chance to read this ahead of time? Yeah. Okay. Did you? Because if you didn't, that's okay. I just wanted you know. Right. I have to fess up. I did not. That's okay. That's okay. I just I just want to know the level I'm talking. All right. And so um, the budget is made up of. I mean, obviously the the main things are you know revenue and expenses. Um, we also have. Um, in our budget, so we, we have the appropriation, which is the amount of budgeted. Um, capital outlay, we have capital outlay that there's more than 5,000 and less than 5,000 goes in two different categories. Um, expenditures, you know, again, how much we're spending. Um, the way our budget is set up, you have your revenue, your expenditures, uh, you have um, contingency, which is for, uh, it's a, Lots of money, for want of a better phrase, for things that uh, for emergencies or things that you're not quite sure of, but they're things that you may need to spend those money during the year. And the last category is reserves. Now, reserves are funds that you hold in reserve that's your savings account, but you cannot spend reserves in the in the year that your budget is. So when we are uh, proposing the 24-25 budget, when we put money in reserves, we cannot spend that money in 24-25. We can spend contingency in 24-25, but we cannot spend the other. Okay, so I just, because that was a little confusing for me for a while, so I just want to make sure. And then we have what's called unexpended, unappropriated or ending balance. And that be, whatever your ending balance is in one year becomes your beginning balance for the subsequent year. Okay. So am I going, am, am I talking to, you know, simple? Because you know all this stuff, I'm, I'm good with that too. Okay. Fine. Um, the term here we use total resources and total requirements. That's another way of revenue and expenses. Okay. So, oh, look at the great colors. Um, okay. So I'm not going to go into all of these in detail, but NCPRD has what's called the general fund revenue source. And that is really what funds the operations of NCPRD. So you've got your administration, um, we, where we get our monies from property taxes primarily, class registrations, uh, contributions, and the huge donations we get, not we need to deal with that. Um, and then anytime we rent something out and then we bring in money through grants. So we have a variety of ways of getting our revenue, but the, the bulk of it comes from property taxes. Okay, questions? All right, so our expenditures. We have uh, one, two, three, four, six areas of expenditures, a personnel service that includes salaries, benefits, you know, all the costs that go with that. Um, 
in our budget, this is because we're a district. It's a, this happens the same with West. Because there's a district, we're a district. If you look in the county's budget, you will not find NCPRD personnel under personnel. You'll, we are uh, located in what's called the materials and services part. So West and NCPRD, our personnel costs are, are in the materials and services item of the department of the county's whole budget. Okay, so if you're ever looking for that, um, yes. And as a point of clarification, that's because you're all county employees and you're contracted to NCBRD and same with West, right? Yes, okay. yes. So it flows through that um, way. It's, it, again, was a little confusing to me at first. Um, I worked for the state for a number of years, and I mean, you think this budget is confusing. Anyway, um, so it just every place has their own way of doing it. So materials and services is a long list of things that are materials and services. Anything from buying postage stamps to consultant contracts to buying computers, training, um, uh, travel. Just there's a whole. There's probably a list of twenty things: dues, memberships, and all this, all the stuff. So you got your personnel and you got your materials and services. A whole range of things. Now, um, the way it works in the budget. We ask for specific amounts of money in each of those lines. We are not held to those. We can move that money around as long as it doesn't exceed the total approved for materials and services. So we'll ask for, but, but we're not so, it's not so rigid that if we ask for $20 in stamps and, you know, and we need $30, we can, we can take it from another line in the, in the materials and supplies budget, okay? Transfer, so this is the, um, so we transfer money from the general fund, you can read here to capital projects. What happens in the budget, when you see our budget and when you see the budget, the county's budget, and we also see it in the NCPRD booklet, what happens is things get double counted. So the NCPRD budget looks like it's a whole lot more than it is. If you look at the operating budget of $43 million, and then you add the transfers, that adds another 14 million. So that's why I, people say we have $57 million budget. We don't have a $57 million budget because transfers are counted twice. So it's important to remember that when you're talking about how much money you have or don't have. Is that clear to folks? I was, I was begging that that not happen. Can we not have that? But that's the budget law. That's how you have to do it. That's how all the other departments, you have to do it. It just so happens in NCPRD, it's done in the department a whole lot more than in other departments. I'm just curious. Um, I, I'm not trying to change budget law or anything, but when I look at things like materials and services, given that we know that part of that is actually the services of staff of is if we can have better breakdowns as opposed to looking at 48 percent of the expenses in that broad category i'd even like to see materials and services subdivided i don't know if it's for what everybody wants to see but i get no help no yeah, fault of anybody but no help out of this and then when i look at that we came into the year with 56 percent balance carryover we're sitting with a lot of money in the budget that's not being used. And I know that NCBRD has been every year yes. been adding and adding and adding, which is not a very smart. I can't follow how that works as far as right. expenses and funding. And as the, those are the very discussions that we're having. And NCBRD staff and I are just kind of going, what? And, you know, and I'm just like, what the heck? I'd say in other words, anyway. Um, so, uh, yes. Um, we have uh, very large um, beginning balances. Um, and so we've got that phenomenon going on as well as the, um, the double counting of the transfers. So, and we have a, a Cali, we, we can, and we can, we'll send it to everybody. I mean, you can, we'll send you as much detail as you want. Um, we have a list of everything that's in materials and services. You can see what all of that is. That's, that's not a problem. Um, so allocated costs. Allocated costs are the things that people um, love to hate. They are the your internal services that are provided to all departments like uh, um, finance and HR and uh, technology services and public and government affairs and facilities and all of that. And so the way it works in, in the county is they're centralized services and the dollars are distributed, the payment of those services 
are, are done are borne by the operating departments. And there's a formula that drives how much each of the operating departments pays. There's a unit rate and it's multiplied by such things as FTE or budget amount. Each different central services uh, area has a formula. And then that is they take the cost of that central service, they apply the formula, and that's what's distributed out to all the departments. Okay. So we, like every department in, um, in, the, in the county, have to pay allocated costs. And again, they are for the centralized services that all of the departments benefit from. So contingency, as you see, as I mentioned earlier, this money set aside um, in the current budget cycle for things that either some of it, you know, like if you're in disaster management, you keep it for, you know, for those reasons. We keep it for other reasons. Um, every department has their reasons for keeping uh, some money in contingency. Um, we have, uh, in the past, the county has a, a minimum of 5% for contingency, I think, and 10% for reserves. Um, so we're going to, we haven't really necessarily followed that, and we're going to start looking at how we have, um, we have way much, way more in contingency than we need to. And the reason that I, I get concerned about that, because I want, I want us to start spending money on projects. And the more we hold in contingency, it just kind of sits there. And that's why you have all these numbers of beginning balances and things like that. So we are going to uh, right size uh, what we put in contingency and look to see how we can take those dollars. They're one-time dollars. And so obviously the best way to use them is one-time capital projects. And so we just want to make sure that we are spending, you know, putting those in the right places. And again, uh, reserves are for, um, there's something that you know about, but you, you, you're not going to get to it next year, so you set it aside for the following year. How am I doing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, capital outlay. You can read this. It's um, it's going to be a capital project, or Kevin has a lot of uh, capital outlay money for capital repair and maintenance of just basically of the of the district, you know, the buildings and the property and everything. So there's money in a couple of different pots there. Um, and again, to be included in capital outlay, it has to have a cost of $5,000 or more. If it's less than $5,000, it goes into materials and supplies. Um, so I'm not going to go through um, all the different uses, but here's what we're talking about um, for the FY25 budget cycle. And here's where I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I really think we need the benefit of Kia's knowledge and expertise to come and talk more in detail. But just so you know, these are things that um, we're not going to get all these done, but we're taking some of them off the back burner and starting the work on them that hasn't been done. And so obviously we have the systems plan. I, I couldn't even begin to speak intelligently about the trails plan. Um, so Kia can speak about that, but I know we got a grant and we're doing something with that, but we okay, that's all I can speak. Um, the ball field study, we are going to be doing an assessment really. Uh, we know we need more ball fields. And so we're going to be collecting that data. Kia, jump in if I'm saying something stupid. Um, the Park at Jennings Lodge, you want to talk about that for a second, what we're going to be doing, what we're planning on? We're really excited about this project because we had earlier anticipated or planned to complete a concept at the end of this month and not take that project further. But we are really excited to share that our intention with this budget number is to complete design through the end of this fiscal year and then pick up on the rest of that design into fiscal year 24-25 and move right into construction. This is all resources allowing and budget allowing, but um, that is our plan going forward. So really excited about that. And the Concord project, um, you all know about that. Um, the additional thing that we're doing that wasn't envisioned at one point, we are putting new roof on. Yay. And um, we also are going to be putting um, some money to well, the construction project didn't include money for the interior, like carpets and paints and stuff like that. So we are starting to look at that. We've got, we are going to have a limited amount of money. We talked about this in the group um, last week, and we'll probably do some phasing, but we are going to set aside some money for that. Um, and the other three, Kia, the hall, the park, and the new urban high school, and the justice. So thank you. I have to confess, I need glasses. Um, so Holland Swanson, um, so this particular project- Let's go to the table because there's a line at the end of the Oh, okay. Thank you for having me see. So for the Holland Swanson natural area, we 
actually did not have staff time committed to complete this project. And so we were actually focusing on some other projects. And again, like Cindy was saying, the resources that are allocated in the budget are for materials and services, therefore consultant time, but not staff time. So we will be doing a little bit of work in the background on Holland Swanson, but for the most part, we are not going to be advancing that project in fiscal year 24, 25 significantly. The park at New Urban High School, we're going to have the system plan really inform us and tell us whether or not that's the right location for the park. We really want that confirmation before we put our limited resources into design and construction. And, um, and really the next major step, if we decide that that's the right place for a park, would be to negotiate with the school district. So again, it would be a staff level um, activity and it wouldn't require resources dedicated through the capital um, budget. And then the park of justice property, um, we, are, we are working um, very hard as staff right now on a strategy that we think will allow us to develop the park that the district needs. We look forward to the system plan confirming um, our analysis, but we are doing some work in the background that um, I hope we'll be able to announce in the coming months. Thank you. Um, system development charges, I'm not, you all know them, I, there's really not much I can add to them, but again, for folks who are new, you may not have a, a lot of information. Um, <clears throat> But um, so the system development charges again. We can we can bring you specific data that sh can show you what we've collected and what we've spent in each of the zones. If you'd like that as well. Um, so the next page is this is the NCPRD total budget. And this is what this is where I get a little crazy because um, this is where you've got your um, double counting. So you've got your operating budget of one hundred seven million and your non-operating budget. Which um, we've got, you know, the big money. And this is, by the way, the current budget. This is what was approved for the 23 24 budget. This does not reflect um, what we're going to be proposing. But um, it just shows you um, uh, where the money is going in the various um, in operating and non operating. And you can see that, um, again, there's still, a, there's still a chunk of change in reserves. And so we are going to be looking at that and moving some of that money into um, into our an active budget for 24-25. And the next one just talks about the general fund. Um, and this shows you again, on the general fund, this is where all of the, um, your, your cost offer operates really for running, the, for running the district. So where we get our money from, which I mentioned that before, you can see that big donations at 1%. Um, and you can see we have a huge beginning fund balance. And again, we have a huge um, beginning fund balance because we had a huge ending fund balance because we weren't spending the money. And so that's where we're really taking another look at, you know, what. How do we how do we spend this money on the capital projects and why this is coming at a great time with the systems development uh, plan so that we can actually we don't want to commit everything now because we really want to have that community engagement process and so but we we do want to get a head start on moving some things forward that have been kind of around for a while. Any questions? As I said, we'd be happy to provide more detail. It's all public. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Earlier, you said there'd be uh, opportunity to get more detail and stuff. I want to speak to. I'm also on the library board, and I bring that up because most people don't care about budgets, and I do. So we formed a subcommittee that we would take all the information and we <laughs> dig into it and have fun with it and stuff. And then we'd have the bigger meeting. If there are any questions, they already got worked out offline without the whole group. So I'd like to propose we do something like that. But I don't care if we do it or not. I just want to be able to get better data. Let me phrase that more, more workable and usable data. So you mentioned it. So could you clarify what you're yeah, I mean, I, um Certainly, if you want to form a budget subcommittee, you're more than welcome to. Um, the only way, the only reason I would say, because eh, you all need to know this. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a budget subcommittee, then the people who aren't on the budget subcommittee or, you know, but again, if that's what you want to do, it, it's up to you. I just think this is, if you're going to be um, an informed advisory council or committee, then I would suggest you all have this information. 
And I'll send it to you. And if you don't want to look at it, you can, that's why God invented the delete key. You know, you can just delete it. So it's it's up to you if you want to do a budget or not. I, I, don't, I don't care. I, as long as I get yeah. the information, that's what yeah. I grew up. Please distribute granular information as much as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right. Um, any questions so far? Am I talking too fast? Because I do that. Um, so what I, the next page on the budget process, so this is the general calendar. We had actually the kickoff meeting today. Um, and so we are, oh, I got three minutes. Um, so basically what we're going to be doing in the next few months is preparing all this stuff. We've got lots of forms and we have lots of, if you like numbers, there's just stuff. And Kelly is, Kelly is just fabulous at it. And so and Lydia we're, is fabulous at it. So we've got a good team. And so we're going to be putting all that stuff together and really the, the executive team at NCPRD is really um, looking at what, what can we actually do? Because um, what I don't like seeing in the budget is that you got all this money. When I look at your budget is here. When I look at your actuals, it's here. And it's like, well, that's not good. And particularly it's been happening for a few years. So we want to get these a, a, a little better aligned, understanding that we don't want to commit every dollar because of the systems plan. Anyway, so we're working through that. We will be bringing you our budget proposals. Um, I'll have to look at the alignment of when they're due to county finance and when we have our next meeting. Um, then we will have a, a meeting with the county administrator. Anything new, anything different than status quo that we propose, either new positions or new programs, we will be meeting with the county administrator with Gary and um, during the month of March and he will let us know yay or nay. And then our our budget presentation material is due to finance. Then the budget committee. So there's there's like nine budget committees. There's the county budget committee, and every district has their own budget committee. And all of those committees will meet in May. And then they will go through the budgets. There'll be an opportunity for public comment on the budgets. And then they so each of those budget committees will make a recommendation to the board of county commissioners, who will make the final adoption decision in June. And so um, the budget process on the next page, I think I've just kind of gone through that. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions on that. One of the things that, that the county has passed or required, typically what has happened in the budget is we go from budget to budget and we and departments, it's not just NCPRD, departments, particularly with the county general funds, um, they just increase their budget. And instead of saying, but, a lot of times people don't spend their budget, but so they're getting increases on top of a budget that they haven't spent. And so the county through Gary's leadership is saying, you know what, we're going to get down and dirty to see what, what have you actually been spending so that we can look at making increases over that rather than increases over something you may or may not spend. Um, I have asked NCPRD, even if we don't get county general funds to have the same attitude. So if we're not spending stuff, um, we're not going to just increase something because that was what was in the budget last year. We're going to actually be looking at the actual expenditures and see that we are that there's some logic to any increases that we're doing. Questions about that? Uh, so much. So uh, do I understand correctly that the district budget is to mm -hmm. couple from the county budget, right? Yes. Okay. So the directors would be approving the budget. Is that right? So we we present the budget to well, I presented to Gary, obviously the district administrator, and then the our budget will be come to the NCPRD budget committee, which is made up of county commissioners and uh, uh, resident representatives, and then that committee makes the recommendation to the board of county commissioners. To the board of directors of the budget. I'm sorry, board of directors. I'm sorry. Yes, board of directors of NCPRD and the resident members. Um, they will hear the budget um, from me, um, or if we have a new director, but I don't think they'll. They, you can't do that then. Anyway, um, and then the public will have a chance for public comment, and then that committee will make a recommendation to the board of planning commissioners. The board of direct board of directors of NCPRD. Is the final step you, you're saying, commissioners? Okay, the same thing. What he said. Want to be <laughs> yes, yes, right. Yes. yes. <laughs> for me, is that whatever happens in the county doesn't particularly uh, affect the budget of NCPRD unless something goofy, right? I mean, that's my. Well, it would be wrong. 
Huh? Okay. In violation of law, they, they are they are legal separate entities, so they yeah. have okay. completely so, separate right. funds, way they're kept, budget committee members. It's all separate, with yeah. the exception of the board of directors in the different halves they work. We don't get any county general funds. Right. So when you hear the term general fund here, this is we're talking about the NCPRD general fund, yeah. not the county general fund. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good question. Okay, um, so the, we're going over. Um, do you want to stay a minute? Uh, for this page particularly. Oh damn! I'm going to get through this without it. We also, <laughs> also have a public comment. So um, do we need a motion to extend time, or do we just kind of? Roll with it. Sometimes you add. <laughs> it's commonly done. Could we choose to extend 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then agree to go for that? Or do we just go into the other job? Though? I'll second your motion to extend by 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and no longer because I live in South Salem. Just saying. So <laughs> done. There you go. So the role of the DAC in the budget process. Um, so as I said earlier with my mayor call book. We would have had these conversations last fall and really go through this and, and really talk about you know what, what you see and what your recommendations are in terms of you know acquisition development operation, blah blah blah. Um, and then what are the projects that you see? I think what what's actually good is you will have the information again from the systems plan, so you'll be able to see it will be even more representative of what the priorities are. But we would expect an interactive dialogue and really, you know, kind of putting our cards on the table and here's what we got, here's the resources again, because we've, we've been in situations where people say, commit to things and we find out we don't have the resources. So I wanna be really clear about what we do have and then have those conversations. And then um, we would be reviewing, you would you would make, well, it's really up to you. You could make formal, I guess, recommendations or you could just, we would be part of the process of the budget that we put forward. Um, to the uh, budget committee. And then the budget committee obviously makes the final. So whether it's um, done as a separate um, report or just made part of the NCPRD budget, um, your voice would be heard. But we'd also like your voice in, you know, again, it's not, we're not asking you to delve in, tell us what number to put here. We're asking for um, your recommendations about priorities and acquisitions and things like that, not, if, not about whether this line item is the right line item. So yes, we do want that engagement, but it ain't gonna happen this year, I gotta be honest. Don't call it. <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, briefly. Yes, briefly. All I wanna say is I appreciate what you said and I support it completely that we're looking at the way it is now, and that by this time next year, it won't look this way. Correct. That's what I heard you say. I'm happy with that. Correct. Thank you. And the last piece, the budget input, um, there's a budget input form that um, actually we got. Um, I've abbreviated this um, from Kevin. Thank you. But you can see all of the project requests that came in. Um, we also had people saying, so I didn't really need to know people's names. Um, and then what our recommendations are. So this will be considered as we finalize our budget. Um, a lot of these recommendations uh, were going to be done already. They're already included in the budget. And so we're just going to walk through those as well. So I'm done. I know I did a speed talking. And Callie, did I, did I miss anything? Or did, did I say anything stupid? No, that's great. <laughs> so if you have questions, please feel free to email me after this. Or you want to do a Zoom call. Or you want to have a conversation. I, I, I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure you have some kind of grounding. I'll add, um, as I'm looking at the calendar, I think this will be a standing agenda item until we get to May. Um, thank you very much. Um, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Quick item. Uh, being on the board of the community center, we are we were happy to hear that in this year's budget, there was money to spend on updating the NC charity website. So I'm hoping yes. that carries forward and actually happens. Yes. There's money that was in the budget that wasn't spent. And so, um, yes. So is that, I think the contract uh, request for our RMP was going to go out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Two months ago. I, I don't remember when we talked to Dominic, but yeah. it is in the budget. Oh, yes. yeah. We, Good we need to update it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, that takes it, us to public comment as our last item. Um, uh, were there cards turned in for folks to make a public comment? Okay. Um, we, we require cards, right? Okay. Um, is there anything else for the good of the order? Yes, quickly. <clears throat> Thank you. I want to just clarify and offer the opportunity the as whether words you want to use on the board's liaison for NCPRD or the board's representative. Um, I think a lot of the questions that would normally be asked that are more staff driven, please direct that to who? Yeah. Okay, okay, Cindy. Okay. And then I'm gonna hand my card out for anything that is, you know, you think that you want to ask the county commission or whatnot, but um, Robert, I know you already have my contact info. Okay. Uh, we got to send emails. The other thing is, when you send emails, I think there's a there's a district email amongst you for public record keeping. So please use that mm -hmm. um, exclusively. Um, that way, we're operating transparently. But don't be afraid to reach out to me. A lot of other people do. <laughs> people I don't even know reach out to me at all hours of the day. Thank you. All our all days of the week. So, um, I'll be and I think that, that thank you. Uh, DAC, the District Advisory Committee, we have our own email address: DAC at North NCBRD dot com. Yeah. Thank you. Um, if you got that at home. I congratulate you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, there's there there's that way to ask questions. Certainly. Um, and with that, I think I get to gavel us out. Thank you so much, um, and thank you for taking the time to have our conversation earlier in the meeting. I am glad that we did that.